Hi folks, welcome back. Now today LLVM is a well-known and widely used compiler toolchain, but it started out many years ago as a research project at UIUC. It was Chris Latner's PhD thesis topic and Vikram Adve was his PhD advisor. So today I want to take a look at a paper that gives a very high level overview of the design and architecture of the entire LLVM compiler tool chain. LLVM stands for Low Level Virtual Machine and its goal was to build a compiler framework that does program analysis and transformation and optimization throughout the lifetime of a program. This includes compiling it, linking it, and even running it. And the entire architecture of the system can be thought of in two broad parts. The first one is the code representation itself, the intermediate language, hence the term VM in the title. And the second one is then the design of the entire compiler pipeline that works upon this intermediate representation that optimizes it and transforms it. And this paper describes the high level architecture and design decisions that went into each of these two parts. Let's start by looking at the design of the instruction set or the intermediate representation. LLVM wants to be independent of any specific programming language. One should be able to take arbitrary programs in any programming language and compile them down to LLVM. And this raises an interesting design tension because you want your intermediate representation to be low level enough to be able to represent programs in a wide variety of languages. And yet it should also have enough higher level semantic information and structure in order to make it feasible to perform sophisticated compiler analyses and optimizations. And that almost locks in the first design choice, which is that you want your instruction set to be abstracting over processor specific details like registers and pipelines and so on and just have some kind of abstracted set of registers. So the LLVM IR has an infinite set of typed virtual registers and each register can hold values of primitive types where the primitive types are boolean, integers, floating points or pointers. The other important design choice for this intermediate representation is that it is in static single assignment form. Now, SSA probably deserves a whole video to itself, but very briefly, the main idea behind SSA is that each virtual register is written to exactly once, which gives you the nice property that whenever you see a use of a virtual register, you know exactly the one place where that value was first assigned. And this is a really nice property to have when you're trying to do compiler optimizations because one very fundamental idea when trying to do optimizations is to trace each use back to where it was defined. And SSA makes that very explicit and really easy. The instructions themselves have a pretty familiar layout. They are in three address form. Uh, they almost all take one or two operands and produce a single result. They are overloaded in the sense that, for example, the add instruction can operate both on ints as well as floating point numbers. And it is a fairly small instruction set consisting of only 31 opcodes. Another design choice which greatly simplifies compiler transformations is that the control flow graph is explicit in that a function is explicitly represented as a set of basic blocks. A basic block is a linear sequence of instructions where control can only enter at the top and only exit at the bottom. And so at the end of every basic block, you explicitly say what the next possible blocks are in the control flow. Again, this is a great choice for compiler optimization along with using SSA form because these two are 
usually the first things that any optimizing compiler does. Break the code into basic blocks and then try to build up the use and definition graph, which is essentially what SSA is. And all these virtual registers, as well as the instruction opcodes that operate them, are typed. And they are typed in a language independent type system, which has primitive types that are pretty much used across all languages. Again, this is great for compiler optimizations because having this type information enables or simplifies many high-level transformations on such low-level code. For example, if you have this kind of higher-level type information, you can reorder fields within a structure or optimize memory management. Now, of course, you still need to be able to compile languages like C or C++ that are not entirely type safe. So you do need a mechanism to cast values into specific types. And LLVM has a cast instruction to do exactly that. But that is the only way to perform such type conversions. Also, while you do have declared type information, that information may not always be reliable. So in addition to that, LLVM also performs some pointer analysis to deduce types. Next, let's look at the architecture of the entire compiler toolchain. And this figure gives us a high level look at what that structure looks like. You start with compiler frontends, which pick specific languages and compile them down to the LLVM intermediate code representation. Then you have linker, which takes all of those compiled files and produces the entire program. This linker is the stage where you can do broad whole program analysis and interprocedural optimizations. Once you have that, you have a component that takes this entire LLVM program and generates native code for a specific processor architecture. But note that you still keep your LLVM code along with it. This native code gen also inserts some lightweight instrumentation, which at runtime tries to detect frequently executed code paths. And once you have some profile and trace information coming out of that instrumentation, you could use it in either a runtime optimizer or an offline re-optimizer to then do profile-driven optimizations. But note that those profile-driven optimizations have the advantage of being driven by traces gathered in the field on real loads and targeted to a specific machine architecture. And the benefit of this architecture is that it gives you these five things which were explicitly design goals of the system. You have program information that is persisted throughout the pipeline. You have offline code generation. You have profiling and optimization driven by those profiles, but based on actual user runs, not just benchmark runs. You have a consistent runtime model. And finally, you have whole program compilation. Now, this set of five properties is something that no other existing compiler toolchain has all at one time. If you look at traditional compilers, take GCC for example, it has offline code generation. You run the compiler offline and get an object file. And it has a transparent runtime model, but it does not persist program information and it cannot do good interprocedural optimization. There's some compilers which try to do interprocedural optimization by doing essentially what LLVM is advocating for, which is exporting the intermediate representation along with the object files so that they can then be optimized in another pass at the whole program level. But then those systems do not take the next step of preserving this representation so that they can then be used for runtime profiling and optimization as well. If you compare this setup with virtual machines like the Java virtual machine or the .NET common language virtual machine, 
Again, they can achieve some of these benefits, but not all of them. One major difference is that, especially for things like the JVM, their instruction set and object model is very tied to the language, in that case, Java. And you often need to jump through many hoops to compile other languages that are very different than Java into JVM bytecode. Some of this is also reminiscent of runtime binary optimization systems like Dynamo or what the Transmeta processor did, both of which I have videos on, by the way. But again, they do not have a persistent intermediate representation that is propagated throughout the lifetime of the program, throughout the entire compilation tool chain. There are a couple of small flip sides to all these design advantages. The first and biggest one is that since this entire LLVM chain is built on language independent optimizations and transformations, if indeed you want to do a language specific optimization, it must happen in the front end before generating LLVM code. The second open question is if languages like Java, which require a lot of heavyweight runtime support, things like garbage collection, for example, can benefit from this kind of a tool chain. Since we're carrying this LLVM intermediate representation throughout the lifetime of the program, we have to worry about how large its code size can be. And the authors did some comparisons and found that LLVM code was about the same size as native x86 executables and smaller than Spark, for example. So that was a quick look at the high-level design and architecture of the LLVM instruction set or intermediate representation as well as its end-to-end -end compiler architecture. To summarize, LLVM is a low-level typed SSA-based instruction set that aims to be language neutral such that a wide variety of languages can compile down to it and it is supported by an end-to-end -end compiler tool chain which performs code analysis and transformation on this LLVM code throughout the lifetime of the program. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.